Welcome to the Joy Quota Podcast. I'm Dylan Fole. And I'm Gavin Malcolm. Our guest tonight is Tremaine Stewart. We get to talk about cars, BMX, more BMX, and we also talk about cars. <laughs> but if you know, <laughs> there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, we get to talk uh, kind of about life too, which is pretty cool. So uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Well, Tremaine, um, for those of our listeners that don't know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm Tremaine Stewart. I'm from Aurora, Colorado. I ride bikes. I drive cars. Work a bunch of odd jobs. Chill. Not too much. Not too much about me. Heck yeah. When So for anyone who's listening, Tremaine's one of our old BMX buddies. I think we've probably known each other. We've all three known each other for at least a decade, yeah, if not longer. Yeah, 13 for sure. years, something around Damn. There. Yeah, it's been, yeah a while. it's been a minute. Um, what got you into BMX? Like originally, do you remember? Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, so one day I saw it on TV, and I didn't like really catch on to it when I saw it on TV, but I went to the park to play basketball one day, and it was just me and my friend Hal. And this guy, Eddie Ramirez, if y'all remember Eddie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was there and he had a bike and he came to play ball with us, but he could like 360 tire tap on flat. And I was like, dude, what was that? <laughs> you know, I was yeah. like, what was that? And then I was like, could I try it? And I got sacrificed right away. And then I was like, dude, do it again. And I was like, wait, what? And then like, you know, just ever since that day, I, right away, I told my parents, I was like, I want to ride bikes. I want a bike so bad. And they went to Walmart and I got like this janky mongoose, dude. Yeah. And then I just rode it out on that thing for a while. But that's definitely how it started. Eddie Ramirez got me started riding BMX. No kidding. Dang. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Eddie's like the one that he was like. He was so good. Like he was stylish and high Effortless. airs. Yeah, and he could do Bef- like some decent tricks too. Everything, dude. Everything. Yeah, I'm, I still yet to see people like boost air out toboggan to tuck nose, air out turn down to tuck nose on the way down. Yeah, and stuff, but never seen anything like that to this day, dude. Yeah, he just like dropped off. He always wanted to be like a family man, like because I grew up with him. Like you know, we started riding together, so like. You know, when you start riding and you get your little crew together, you guys are like best friends and whatnot. So just the whole entire time, Eddie was more worried about girls than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then he got his opportunity to have a family, and that's what he did. He was like, I'm going full send on this family. He started having kids and stuff. And, Dang. you know, I ain't mad at my hey, guy yeah. for it. Live how you want to. Good for him, man. That's, that's awesome. super cool. Does he ride at all anymore? No. Nah, well... I seen him a few summers back, but he moved to New Mexico. So honestly, oh, I don't know. Okay. I just see him on Facebook. He got a new little truck. That's pretty cool. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I really know. Well, speaking yeah. of trucks, uh, you're super into cars. You actually have hosted a couple car meets now. Yeah, dude. When I feel like that's like reasonably new, or have you always been like super into cars, and you just finally now are in a place where you can like actually play? Um, uh, I mean that's a good way to put it. So Trey always so. After after I met Eddie and Hal, the very first person I met, or the very first person I met after was Trey. And Trey, when I first met him, he had an Impala. And then after his Impala, he had this 300ZX. I know, and exactly. I, yeah. And I seen that thing, dude. I was like, whoa, man. You know, I was like, what is this? And I was just interested. But at that time, you know, I'm just a kid. I can't afford anything. So it was just something I left in the foresight. But now, you know, I got older and then I got like fortunate that my parent my mom definitely hooked me up on this one she got me that rally art and i converted that into an mr and then just ever since then it was just something i've been into and something i like now i got a t40 i don't know i've had a couple i've had a subaru i crashed that thing unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> but i mean when you drive is it a it, subaru if it hasn't been wrapped around a pole or a tree or something <laughs> funny because it wasn't yeah. on a tree man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't yeah, Subaru WRX should just come with a tree embedded in the side of it. <laughs> Might as well save have been, everybody dude. the hassle. <laughs> Might as well have been, but that that was my baby, man. I really, I really have that car dialed in. But now I have my 240, dude, and I got my 240 going. And uh, my friends Eddie and Adine, or Aggie and Adine, or Aggie and Eddie, however you want to say it, <laughs> they had them too. So like, I was like, oh, okay, I'll get one of these because these guys already know about them. Because you know, like beforehand I, I could put bolt-ons and stuff on but now i'm at a point where i could like like from frame just about get a car together I mean, yeah. it need some help and stuff but yeah that's sick that's super cool yeah. i know enough to get myself into some decent trouble yeah like i feel pretty confident with youtube i could get through just about any job on a car school of pretty YouTube. handy yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty handy i've 
done like several transmission swaps and stuff like that, but like the whole concept of what makes a motor run, like I'm still pretty fuzzy on. So I'd love, I'm hoping to do an engine swap on my truck at some point, and that'll be my like chance to actually learn what's happening underneath the hood. Dude, it's legit just like, it's like a shop vac, but you know, when it blows all the air out the back, <laughs> bunch of air in, bunch of air out, the thing will run, a little combustion in between, yeah. and that's that's the gist of it. But yeah, um, with the meets and stuff, dude, just, uh, we started our team, we're getting our team together, like Trey has hoodlum autos, and then me, um, Ed, and Augie, we got a uh, team Fuzakiru, so... We were starting our team, and I was like, yo, dudes, like, one day we were just at the park after riding. We were there all late. I was like, yo, guys, you guys want to have a barbecue tomorrow? And then, boom, like, I posted it the night before. It was, like, 10 o'clock, and we got a huge turnout, you know? We just didn't even get that much food. Just had one grill and just... <laughs> <laughs> That's it, how it always goes, it, man. You know, like, and then just people could just kept showing up and showing up and showing up. So then we were like, okay, it's nighttime. People are still coming. So then Oscar went home got a generator we took night photos and stuff yeah. and I, after that day like we were all a little drunk and i was sitting there i was like guys we're gonna do a big one now we're gonna try and see what we can do about it and then that's how the that's how that other one came about dude we just gave it a month time of planning and just sending it out and i was able to take advantage you know like all your friends do something so yeah <laughs> i got a friend that's a chef i was like yo dude what are you doing on saturday and then i had another friend that was a dj i was like what are you doing brought it up to trey and then we just all worked together and I, I think it was an awesome time. It won't be the last one for sure. Wanted to do one like a Friendsgiving kind of thing, but I mean, just the weather is so unpredictable out here. You never know right. what's going to happen. So we're probably going to do one like beginning of March or mid-March, something like that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I want to do it in the same spot because it's like almost the Wild West there, you know? <laughs> like, right. Sure. That's the best place to do <laughs> it because it works anywhere else. No way, dude. No way. So, and and there's like parents there and stuff still like you know like but it's they're just crazy. cool about it they're mm -hmm. like my kids are in the park it's none of our business what's going on up there so yeah there's a sweet video on youtube link in the description, link in the description. <laughs> uh, it got pretty rowdy it was one of the funnest days ever let alone funnest car meet i've ever been to for sure oh yeah well and like that's not even like normally something that i would do because like i'm more like a off-roader kind of guy and so going to a car meet's like not something that would normally cross my mind, but I was like, oh, yeah, so all my BMX friends anyways, like, I might as well go. And uh, that was, like, the craziest time, dude. There was just absolute chaos for, like, four or five hours. It was so sick. Nonstop with no interference from the police. Actually, I talked to him prior to it. Like, what? We, yeah, dude. So there's, like, this taco mix that's, like, right down from the skate park. And there was, like, three squad cars out front. So, like, we go in there to get food. And they're all just sitting at this table. We take our food and we eat outside. And, like, I see that they're all coming out. And the sergeant comes out first. And I see him. I'm like, hey, could I talk to you real quick? And I ask him. I'm like, yo, man, would it be, you know, cool if I had a car meet, car show? And he's like, well, what are you guys going to do? I'm like, I'll just, you know, pop the hoods and hang out. And he's like, I'm not going to mess with you. And don't do anything illegal. And he held true to it, dude. He didn't show up. Yeah, I couldn't believe that no one showed up. The amount of rowdiness that went down. <laughs> yeah, like like between mean, all the dudes on motorcycles, all the dudes drifting with you around all the cul-de-sacs, Dylan or some mysterious person. <laughs> definitely not Dylan. Unknown, definitely not Dylan. <laughs> definitely not Dylan driving the Miata around on the, on the track. That was like the craziest good time. Yeah, dude, I mean. All for the cost of just a front tire on my bike. Because filming Dylan, I got 40 goat heads in one tire from that track. Oh. One tire. And yeah, and know, this was the track. Everybody's mad about the track. Yeah, everybody yeah. was so pissed that we drove on the track. And it's like that someone drove on the track. Oh, someone. yeah. So. We're in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's, it was so funny, dude. I'm still shocked. Though. I, I pulled a total of like 70-something goat heads out of my bike. Still have air in my back tire. It didn't go flat. Oh, man. That's yeah. The luck of the draw right there. So psyched. <laughs> That was very lucky. Yeah, no, dude, it was awesome. And I tell you, you say you haven't been to many car meets. You will not go to another one like that, man, unless you're in California or Las Vegas or something. Because usually, you know, you just go there and you stand around. But who builds a car to just stand next to it? Not exactly, me. Yeah. yeah. Not me, dude. Right. Trey's dad, I ran into him uh, a day or two later, and he was like, oh, all of those cars are, like, nobody puts, like, the amount of effort into how they look. Like, he 
he's going to put into his truck, uh, his S10, and he's going to make it like put all the time into how it looks. And I'm like, no, we like to drive them. And they, when you drive them, they're going to get messed up. Like that's yeah. just a, how it goes. They're never going to be like show pieces. And that's n- what none of us want. No, I'm here to rip it, man. I think of it just like BMX, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. I, that who cares how it looks. Does it run? Can you slay it? Exactly. That's it. She still pedals. <laughs> she still pedals. <laughs> Broken spokes clanking everywhere, dude. <laughs> bottom bracket falling apart yeah i remember growing up our buddy jt used a headset or a zip tie as a headset spacer once. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do yeah man. keep it going that's awesome man but yeah dude i mean definitely cars you know still love bmx i still ride i rode earlier today rode saturday then ride sunday i needed to recover from saturday but yeah i know i'm definitely making my transition i want to have some sick ones yeah do some cool car stuff heck yeah no, I, would you what's the do you think you'll get another car or uh yeah so i needed a car desperately bad because I, I was driving a, after i crashed my subaru i was driving a truck and this truck was so old dude and it threw a bearing on me so like i desperately just needed a car right away so i went and got that ford fusion but that thing is getting ready to go i'm getting ready to get another subaru and then I'm going to finish my 240 and then I'll just get like a truck to haul my 240 around. Mm-hmm. But I need, I can't, I can't just have a regular daily, man. It's just not for me. I need something that rips. Yeah. I want to go from ripping to ripping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so funny. Like I've learned I can't be trusted in a fast car as a daily driver. Like I remember my Subaru. I literally got like six tickets in that. Oh, thing. Yeah, it dude. was unstoppable ticket mania. <laughs> and now that I drive my like, old slow Toyota truck, hands down like the best daily I've ever had. Cause I, you rarely get to drive a car as hard as I drive that pickup. Cause it's <laughs> always like through the floorboard, like ripping it and just like, um, but it's slow enough that like, I don't, don't actually ever, it's been like two years since I've gotten a ticket and I'm like, what is this life? It's like My when- insurance is finally like reasonable again. <laughs> so I, the, the goal is to hopefully get a, another, uh, speedy off-road car. So that I'm not tempted to use it as a daily. Well, holla at your boy. He's got two of them going now. I know. Dude, I got tried to get a Miata like Dylan's. Uh, I was genuinely thinking about it, but it wasn't quite as built. Mm. And it just wasn't going to be worth it. Yeah, I am so dumb. The other day, there was, it was the same lifted mm-hmm. Type one, just with the three inch lift, but it was only fifteen hundred bucks. Oh, that it was in Albuquerque. It. it was in Albuquerque, so it would have been a mission. And I thought about it for myself because I, uh, mine's so rusty. I'm gonna need a new, like, yeah, donor car and soon swap anyway. All the parts. Yeah, but then I just couldn't justify it. But I should have sent it to you. I'm. Oh yeah, that would have been pretty sick. That's how deals oh. always go. Like when I went to get my 240, you know, I paid five grand for it at first. And like, oh, I wouldn't have done it again, but I love it. <laughs> I love it now, man. But like, you know, just like, I'm just still looking. Cause I look every day. Cause you never know what's going to come up. Yeah. And I'm like, dang, I could have, I could have had this one, you know, or I could have had this one. Two forties so. though. The oh. Five grand seems like a pretty good price now. I don't know what it was. What Mine condition was just it was. beat, dude. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't just 240. You got to put clapped at the end of that, you know, like a clapped yeah. one, dude. So it took a while. I had to replace I don't think there's a bolt I haven't turned on there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. dude. It was, it was beat, you know, like, yeah. I mean, those cars, everyone who owns them just freaking thrashes them. I mean, I'm not mad at you. That's what it's for. But I mean, I rip mine. You saw me, dude. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> mine is but nice, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like you get in there and it's decent, you know. It's not the worst thing you ever drove. Maybe a few little ghetto things, but it's all right. That's character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, what's your favorite car that you've ever had? Was it? Oh, by far that Subaru, dude. That Subaru? Yeah. Well, no, I love, well, my favorite, just like first day I had it, I love that Subaru. But now I've put so much time into the 240, dude, like. I go to, I look at it every day before I go to work and stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's my cute. baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love that car. But I mean, that Subaru was awesome because I don't know, man, it was perfect. It was like my exact taste, my exact style. Like, and yeah. the 240 is getting there. It's just, it takes a lot of work. It's more than just money. It's like, you actually got to work on it, you know? That's the hard part mm-hmm. when you're like actually wrenching and stuff. It's like, oh, like now that I care, I'm going <laughs> to buy expensive parts and I'm going to. 
and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do it myself. Like that's the hard part it's for like, sure. Ooh, take you apart because this should only take an hour, or just keep driving how it is because it works. Yeah, right. Because that hour turns into a one, full day. One broke bolt, man. Whole different thing. I know. One even if bolt. it, even if things go right for me, it seems like it always one hour thing turns into four, eight hours right away. Easily. My Easily. problem is I keep getting involved with friends who do things well mm. and it bleeds into my car habits like i'll be in the, so i was like oh you know what i think i need to replace a ball joint and then i was like well while i'm at it i should probably just do tie rods because the steering's a little loose and i was like well while i'm doing the tie rods i might as well do all the other steering components well while that's off i might as well do all the bushings on the car <laughs> and all of a sudden i'm like oh my god i have a weekend's worth of work easy to do that's a good that's a good habit to have though because you know you do that weekend's worth of work and then you just got like months and years of just like quality driving you know that's the hope yeah because i love that little pickup i my goal is to like really take it this upcoming year on some like aggressive trails and just like prove what a stock tiny little car with some willpower can do. Cause I see so many dudes with like $80,000 Rubicons <laughs> that, you know, never see a trail or if they do mm. like they're so timid Yeah, I mean, versus I mean, right. The, the funnest thing in the world is driving past them in the Miata. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something that just has no business being up there. Yeah, yeah. It's like, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, because Dylan and I took the pickup to a little off-road park when we were jumping that PT Cruiser, and that thing <laughs> just scampered up all the hills. Like, it was so sick. Dude, I want to go with you guys one time. I've never done anything off-road. I've gone mud, but I don't think that counts. No, it's not the That's same not as, the like, same. legit rallying yeah. in a car. I haven't done that yet. It's the best. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I, you know, I think if I had to say, I think rally is the most disciplined aspect of driving, dude. It's serious. It's a lot of left foot braking. You got to be prepared for like multiple trains. It's oh, serious, yeah. dude. And those dudes are like, it's it's all the way down the whole time. Oh, it's they're crazy. not playing, man. Yeah, it's and just, the yeah, fans, it's ridiculous. I don't understand why in rally and like trophy trucks, like any sort of off road racing in general, why are the fans on the track? The whole time. <laughs> I just don't get it. And like, how scary is that as a driver? Probably to just know, like it doesn't like, I'm not taking my foot off the gas. So hopefully I don't just clip this dude at a buck 30 in the knees. I'm sure those dudes are like just locked in with tunnel vision, man. Like they have to be, cause there's a dude sitting next to you just in your ear the whole time. Like 50, right? Yeah. <laughs> 12 left break, break. Like, you know, and they're going through it quick. Cause you're pulling up on it quick. And, Dude, you got to watch out for trees. I'd be more worried about hitting a tree and stuff, falling off a mountain, you know, like tunnel vision. I wouldn't even see those people. I'd be doing my oh, thing. Oh, man. Yeah, we were watching uh, F1 on Netflix, the the show. It's it's a really cool show, which I didn't even, I didn't have any interest in it, but I was wrong. It's amazing. <laughs> I was but anyway, wrong. yeah, <laughs> I will admit I was wrong. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. But um, there was one guy, I don't remember his name. This is like end of the second season. Um, he drives for Williams, but he was a F1 and rally racer, Oh man! Damn. but he had a horrific rally crash where he like went into like those metal things on the side of the road, like guardrails, oh, yeah. but at, where it ends, like he yeah. ran his car like straight into it and it like impacted, like his yeah. car went through the thing and like roll cage, it's certainly is better than nothing but it really didn't seem to do a lot in that way and it like well yeah just basically well, it's not really knife. a cage yeah. in the front though. exactly you know, there's yeah nothing protecting you besides the firewall mm -hmm. well like, yeah i don't know if it went like through the motor or around the motor or whatever but it and then so it destroyed his right hand so now he's got just like a uh his hand is still there but it just like barely works mm -hmm. so like williams which is like the worst team they still have him as their driver but it's still so cool that he can yeah, work they it just enough take to his like... hand to the knob <laughs> yeah, and away yeah, it yeah, goes. yeah i don't they didn't really go into a whole lot of detail like how it actually works because it, it's there and it's it's just like the like a classic like gimp hand barely does anything what? Uh, but which is hilarious still, that he can still drive race. circles around all of us like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean <laughs> any disrespect <laughs> yeah i don't really mean any disrespect i mean he's incredible i just like how cool it how well how dangerous it is rally mm. but also how amazing of a story it is that 
he just immediately right back in the car and yeah, yeah dude, can it's still crazy. Drive. On the other spectrum of that, there's this dude that fall, I think they call it like Devil's Turn or something like that. Uh, Ken block slides it, but there was an Evo that did it, dude, and they fell off the mountain. They tumbled oh, like yeah, yeah. car tumbles. That it one. had to be like 15, 20 times. They get out hardly bruises, man. If you if you do that's it where right, a roll yeah, cage is clutch. That, if you do it right, dude, it'll keep a you nice alive. Nice tumble, man. but yeah. uh, that head-on collision. I mean, like, there's nothing, you know, like yeah. the engine <laughs> coming into the firewall. Like, you got to deal with it. The force has to go someplace yeah. when you go from a buck twenty to. A stopped immediately that's why cars have like crumple points and stuff you know so like when you get in a head-on collision like it's designed so that the motor breaks and then it falls under the car so it doesn't come in mm -hmm. that's why you know even though like older cars are technically stronger you know because they're made out of metal frames like you're you're almost more likely to die here you're probably gonna die depending oh, on yeah. how fast you're going you're gonna die yeah it's, it's pretty wild all the engineering that goes into it i was talking with uh josh thurman our buddy because he, he races in a Porsche league oh, wow. on, like, track days and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he's pretty good. Like, he's actually doing pretty well. Um, but we were talking about all the crazy safety measures that they have to have, like the Hans neck brace that, like, attaches to the seat, that attaches to the head, that, like, everything is he's super, super. Place, really? so he has yeah. to have that for his car? He's not allowed I'm not sure if he has to. He's been looking into it. Because mm -hmm. I thought they were, like, reasonably cheap. Oh, no, and a decent Hans is like a thousand bucks, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Like it's safety gear. You don't want yeah. to cheap out on it. I mean, you want to survive, right? Yeah. Uh, and even if you do survive, you want to be the same. Oh yeah. Well, that was the, yeah. he was like, yeah, look at the difference. But there's like a crash where there's um, like a cam mounted on the roll bar behind them yeah. and they get in a crash and the passenger, I think it was a rally car and they were going like, it was amateur rally. They were going super slow. Like, tops 40 like tops no, I mean, and they just like slide off the road and into a ditch but it obviously like stops them super fast and they just like front end stop super quick and the driver who didn't have a hans like smashed his helmet off the steering wheel even in a harness and then the other dude wow. was like completely fine because he had his hans on i was like dang dude. this is like the whole uncertified vertus certified helmet, bmx you know? helmet all over again i was like yeah that makes sense that you'd need that yeah, every you, single time you definitely don't want to hurt your neck or your back you know like that's that's life altering right there yeah no dude. neck no back dude so i mean i'd pay for it if that's what you want to do i'd pay for it i mean there's even a reason why the speed limit is the way it is you know there's a reason you can only go 85 after that you're just likelihood of survival without any safety measures in the car just drastically decreases absolutely yeah so do you do any like track days with like the drifting and stuff I have or do you yet. mostly just hang out in mexico <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i hang out in mexico a lot we got a couple mexican locations but <laughs> i'm going to imi next um next season i just like i was last year i didn't really get to drive the car very much because i was flipping that house and i had like it was almost a construction loan for it so you had a draw process and you had to have the certain like five thousand up front before you would get your draw you needed to do five thousand worth of work they'd reimburse you and then so on and so on until the project's complete so i was coming up with that on my own while still maintaining my life so like i had to put my car to the side so when i got to drive it this year i was like dude i'm just driving this thing and one thing people never talk about at the track is how hard it is on your car, especially at IMI, because you go off, dude, and, like, you know, you're driving a Slam 240, so you go off and you, like... Yeah, this is a go-kart track not meant for drifting, but it's the only place in the state where you can go pay $100 and legally do it. There's no other... Exactly. Regularly. Like, they yeah. have events, but... Um, I had yeah, a buddy anyway. go, dude. He brought his car the very first day, like hadn't really ever slid or anything like that like not too much experience like right away ripped his oil pan off you know like Dang. it's serious the track is like you fall off that track you're gonna hurt your car because like snow and rain and other people that go into it so it's all rutted and stuff and there's rocks and you know i don't know so i'll go next season but i just wanted to drive my car this year i was like it took me a long time especially with the electrical issues i was having i had to replace all the harnesses and stuff so i was like oh Dang. no I'm just going to drive this thing. Yeah. So that's just enjoy it while you had it. Yeah. I just want to enjoy it. Plus, it wasn't like a great year for any of that stuff anyway. So nah, I mean, what a, what more could you ask for? I, well, and then, I mean, the flip side of it not being a good year, COVID opened up all the warehouses and stuff. No one was working. So, like, you know, you could just really, like, 
it was it's been the wild west lately yeah just go <laughs> charge around some empty parking lots you know right. like, i'm from aurora dude like you'll see some dude just pull up on you on it riding an atv and stuff you're like oh that's, that's yeah pretty tight. Like, you know <laughs> dude and, as a drifter have you seen obviously you have we haven't had a chance to talk about it on the podcast the donuts that someone did on i-25 a major highway here in denver that's like it's a good amount of rubber left on the road. <laughs> yeah, I actually haven't seen it. Oh, it's it's like, right by Elich's. Yeah, like, it's like right, right underneath the um, like Colfax overpass. Yeah, somebody Aussie went dude. like two, uh, two separate, <laughs> two I don't separate know if it's two cars. separate cars or just two different times. Like across 30, all the lanes. 30 to 50 uh, straight donuts, like just tread marks left. It's, it's insane. perfect circles. I almost want to bet you with someone in some kind of truck, dude. The, I don't know. The truck meets, they, I don't know. I've been to a few. Because it's a pretty it. tight little <laughs> circle. So, like, unless it's, like, a little drift truck, like, with Bang like has. Like an S10 or something. But it's, like, it's a good amount across all three tracks. So, That's I want to know how it happened and why there's no footage. Like, someplace there has to be footage. I, someone got it, so, dude. Because it's so wild that it's in the middle of the highway. Like, did they stop traffic? Or was someone just in absolute They absolutely literally maniac? have to. There's no possible way. I don't know. Way. During, like, the height of COVID, in super the middle of the night. The, yeah, super early in the morning, late at night. Because there was nobody on the roads there for a minute. I know. It was, oh, traffic was how it's know, supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the COVID well, traffic I think was we're great. going back to it I, I, the, uh, pretty soon. Yeah. Word on the street, which Word if that does street. happen, there's a great BMX spot right next to my house that I didn't take advantage of last time. I messed up real bad. It's a perfect roof spot where it's like, it's round and it's like five back to back to back spines. It's like oh, the way that it's set up where like it's, it's cylindric. So it's like this round roof and there's just like a hipped spine all the way around it where you can go like one, two, three, four, five, all How, the way across. Do you got like a good amount of like runway between each one oh yeah there? like 20 feet it's a huge oh, dude. It's, it's literally perfect and it's down the street from my house and i drive past it literally every single day but it's super close to the police station it, it's funny it's funny how like the bmx mind works like you look at that roof and you're like oh it's fine someone else looks at that roof they're like architecture you know yeah. like no it my wife teased me so much about that. Like we'll be out and about and we'll be like taking a walk someplace. Yeah. It literally happened this weekend. I was on a walk with her and uh, my father-in-law. We we're just walking around this park and all of a sudden I'm like 30 feet behind the two of them. And they're like, Whoa, where's Gavin? And I'm literally just eyeballing this bridge. Like, dude, that'd be a sick double tire ride across <laughs> the handrail. Like that'd be sick. BMX, yeah. BMX is rad, man. I, 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 shout out to Dustin Art because he has he has the definite spot eye. He'll be like, yeah. "Dude, I found this spot. You'll do the perfect blah 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 here." And I'm like, "Dang, man, you're right." Dude, this that guy. <laughs> that guy's. It's crazy how much time he's spent like Google Earthing Colorado. That's what I was gonna say, dude. He literally just types in like school, Google Earth, anything. Yeah. Checks it out. He literally has like searched all of the Denver metro area on Google Earth by like every little tiny frame and pixel of Google Earth. It's so crazy. Proof of that, man. Uh, the Good Day, Bad Day video that we filmed together a couple years back, man, like took me to the School of Mines, you know, and there's like a little curb cut, you know, that thing that like lets handicaps mm -hmm. go up and down the sidewalk. Yeah. There's like a curb cut over and it's like a grass patch and then a rail and then some rocks. And I then know a exactly patch. which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, dude, he took me to that, dude. And I was just like, man, I can't, I can't believe you found this. You know, I would I never see this thing. I and it's not even like near a parking lot. Like I have no, no. idea except it's for Google Earth, how he field, found dude. that. It's like you would literally have to just be riding around the school or I don't know how he did Even it. then, hmm. like it doesn't make sense <laughs> no. to go to that <laughs> part of the world ever, even if you go to School of Mines. So the fact that he... Because I, I, I was up there with Trey, I want to say. Yeah. Or, like for some reason, we were stunt both in show? Golden. Maybe a stunt show? It, was, Probably it had to have been show. a stunt show. Yeah. And he was like, yo, check out this spot that Tremaine just tore up. Because it was pretty recently after you did it. Yeah. Oh man, that was, ooh, that was, that was probably like my biggest moment in BMX. I haven't had a man up harder than I had a man up for that. I was like, well, this is this is serious right here. This is a big one. Yeah, it's a good spot. I, I'd love to try and go back. I think I, 
I think I thought about trying something that day, oh, and I was man. like, "Nah, eh, I'm good." It's serious. <laughs> even, even though it's like grass, dude, it's like you—if you don't clear the rail, you're going to die. Yeah, you're anything going to die. over a rail is always terrifying. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't remember if I've seen that that video or not. So what what did you end up doing? I trucked it. Okay. Yeah, dude. It's like a good, Ooh. solid, like full height rail. It's probably what, like five feet back from the curb cut. Yeah, dude. And That's then like another like five feet know. back, there's like a big steep grass hill. It's a sick spot. It's yeah, literally yeah, perfect. Really. Mm. I, I threed it like I, I'm. I'll be up front. I had to three it like twenty times because like <laughs> the three pop is different than the truck pop. You know, like yeah, when you just do a three, you could like suck the bike up and keep it all close to you. But when you do that truck for that split second, man, like the bike almost drops. And wow, yeah, that was that was that was a real one for me. Definitely highlight of my career, dude. I I feel like that's what's so fun about BMX is like. I'm definitely regressing in my level of skill, but all that means is I get more opportunities to feel that feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Because it used to be like I had to genuinely do something off the walls insane to feel like that rush of this is dangerous, <laughs> this is crazy, I'm pushing myself, versus now like all it takes is something small like 360ing a dirt jump, and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> so spooky. <laughs> like the... The nerves come back. Oh, yeah. So, and I think, I don't know if it's the same for you, but like for me, it's become cars do that feeling. Cause like I know, like obviously cars have consequences too, but BMX, like I know the consequences are pretty dire. So, I, I mean, I stopped doing trying any kind of tricks like years and years ago and just kind of enjoy like following some trails or whatever. But now yeah. with the cars, it it is that next level of like trying to push it and trying to find that feeling and like push the boundaries and see what's possible because I don't I don't know my limits with that versus I know my limits pretty hard with the BMX. bike. I mean, it's body consequences versus financial consequences. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like you know, my ankle will never be the same. My shoulder will never be the same. I still ride pretty hard, but like it's nothing like when I was you know early, like I would say like my early twenties. Oh uh, yeah, it, you know I didn't care. I was like, dude, I guess we're here. Give it a go. But now yeah. I'm like, mm, nah, I'm okay. But I still try and ride a lot. I think of it more as like the gym now. You know, I'm like, get me a good workout in, get my body right. And it's like a mental workout too, especially when you're trying something hard or it's scary, you know, and you like break that barrier. That's awesome. But I definitely feel what you're saying about cars. And like I said earlier, I'm making my transition as well because it's, it's a whole different game. It's a whole different game and it's a fun one too. So I'm impressed that you can like deal with the tension of financial consequences. I will throw the body every time, <laughs> but if it's like... If I break an axle, that's like six hundred bucks. <laughs> like you just I just can't right bring away, myself. Man. Yeah. Just like your body has to yeah. heal, your wallet has to heal. You got to save. <laughs> <laughs> <You> gotta... <laughs> Sorry, bro. I'm got my uh, my wallet's on some ibuprofen. Right? Just trying to <laughs> heal up. See, that's where having the the multiple cars is necessary. So when one breaks, you're you're not out your daily. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need a daily for your daily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where I'm trying to get. I can't. I can't wait to get rid of this Ford, dude. I mean, I love that thing. I'm so grateful that it's reliable. You know, good heat, cold air, nice radio, clean interior, drive smooth, great gas mileage. But it's just not the lifestyle I want to live. I want something reckless to drive every day. <laughs> reckless. <laughs> yeah, but that's the point, right? Like, I feel like too many people, their daily driver doesn't make them smile. Like, my no, truck is dude. not a crazy truck. But it makes but, you happy. I've never seen someone sit in the driver's seat of that truck and not smile. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so <laughs> cheeky and so silly. Like, you can't help but be like, ah! yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I feel like that's missing from cars now. Like, they're all way too serious oh, and like luxurious and, exactly and nice the same looking to, to be special enough to like feel that feeling like the feeling is because it's the newest and it's the coolest but it's not because like there's anything really truly rich and exciting about the personality of the car like you think about like old flip up headlights or like if you google the interior of like an 87 forerunner that car had like 50 horsepower to the wheels but it was the sickest car and it was like you could not do anything but have a good time in that car Absolutely. Even if you were in the slow lane getting passed by every car on the road, you're like, eh, I'm happy, you know, versus 
now it's you're in your AC with your cooled seats and your 35 speakers <laughs> and like there's electronic driver aids that monitor whether or not you're sleeping, whether or not you're drifting out of the lane. You can take your hands off the wheel and drive. Like at that, at some point, like it's no longer, gone, you know, a f- yeah. That like cars don't have a mechanical feel anymore. You, like when you turn the wheel, the car raises the RPMs just to make it that look like that much mm-hmm. easier for you and stuff, you know, and all that stuff is cool. Like, I mean, definitely if that's what you're into, you want to just relax and drive, like make cars for commuters, but I'll, I'll stay with these clap two forties, man. I'll drive yeah. these, I'll drive these Subarus and stuff. Cause I mean, like, it's cool, you know, like hearing turbo and noise, hearing turbo noises and fumes coming in your car and stuff, bro. And backfired. And yeah, I, I'm into it. It's a great time, and I will always, I will always rock with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so not what's always. next? I then? might get a Tesla later in life. Cause Just <laughs> why not? Yeah, I'm gonna took it here right now. I'd yeah. like get me there, car. So what kind of Subi is next? Uh, I'm probably gonna get a Hawkeye this time because I had the I had the 2011 the wide body one, mm-hmm. and that thing that thing was awesome, but. I want to just try something different. I already had that. I already had an Evo. So I'm going to see what this Hawkeye is about. And I'm not really either that or I'll get like some kind of BMW. But I'd rather stay away from that route. Yeah. I'd rather just get another Subaru, man. It fits me. Heck yeah. Hawkeye is my favorite. Hawkeye. Yeah. See, I liked the bubble weird. The like ones just before too. the Hawkeye. The blob eye. Yeah. yeah I like that one more. Mind. For whatever reason, I don't know, but I wouldn't mind it. It depends on what comes up and like what will be the best value, you know. Because I mean, yeah. I want to find someone that hasn't messed with it too much. Because you never know, like what I learned from the you want a stock, yeah, you want a stock you... car to turn into a very not stock car. If That's it's already not stock, you want to stay as far away from that as possible. That's what I learned about the two forty man. Like you never know who the other person was or what kind of time they put in or how tedious they were. So, well, and how hard they ran it. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I mean, you buy a car after me. I hope, you know, I hope you I don't know. Cause, uh, you're not you going to get any money for it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, I had a good time with my suit. Those things, if you build it right, they can be pretty crazy. I had a EJ 207 in mine mm. from, uh, Japan that already had like the forged internals and it revved an extra like 1500 higher. Oh man. So you could get like nine grand, I want to say, out of it oh, at the top man. end. It was nuts. It was super sick. I think I maxed it out several times at like a buck 40 something. They get <laughs> such a bad rep, man. Like honestly. It's because they do explode constantly. But spend the money, dude. Spend the money. Get your, get, get your bolt ons, get an access port. Pay someone that tunes cars every day to tune your car. Quit trusting these dudes with laptops on your cars. The street tune is not the way, dude. If you bring it to someone that does it, I had my Subaru five years, same tune, ripped it. Transmission went out before anything else, dude. Uh, Subaru transmissions are made (laughs) of glass. Yeah, It was made of glass, but that's because I had a WRX, and they were out of their mind for what they wanted for that STI swap. Because, like, you can't just, like, swap the trans. You have to do the drive shaft, and then you have to do the... the Well, yeah, because it's a fully different transmission. Because I thought about doing it to mine. Yeah. Because I... So I had it, and it was on ethanol. And it was at, like, over 300 horse. It was, like, 340 and that thing was a rocket ship. It was a great time for like three weeks until the motor exploded. And then <laughs> um, and then I paid like 10 grand. Like I, that was like the first time I was like, same thought. I was like, I'm not going to trust some dude in the street. Like I'm just going to pay the most reputable Subaru shop to do all the work, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And they ended up having to do the swap twice. Because the spider line on the back for all the coolant had a crack that they had no idea about until they ran the motor. Like, there was no way to know. Well, they turned it on and just started... And it just started pouring out of the back of the, the engine. And uh, so, sure enough, they had to basically fully install it and then fully uninstall it to put, like, a $15 part in. And then was fully... Was you? They, they made it on me, for sure. Like, oh, I'd have been like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, at that point, it was like the motor's already out. They already did the work. Like they're, uh, they're like, cool. We'll keep your keys. Like it doesn't matter to yeah. us. Uh, it, it was pretty rough. Like that was, that was the hardest part. Was like just sinking all that money in, and then I was all pumped. Like, oh yeah, it works now. Drove it two days, 
transmission exploded. <laughs> and then Jeez, I had to dude. put the transmission in. Jeez. Yeah. I'm like definitely traumatized from all Subarus forever now. Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. lucked out. My guy, he was he was uh, deployed most of the time, so he was like the second owner of the car because I was the third. And first guy had it only like 10,000 miles. wasn't for him, I guess. Second guy, he was deployed most of the time, so he never even drove it. You know, he just gave me some nice stuff, touchscreen radio, yeah. tinted the windows. I was like, thanks, man. By the time I got it, it was like a brand new car. So Yeah, how many miles were on it? Uh, I want to say 30,000. Oh, dang. Oh, yeah, because you ha- when did you get it? It was like pretty new for the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't new for the time, but I mean. Like within like five years, yeah, right? Well, yeah, within five years, yeah. And that's fair enough. But, dude, that's I sick. love that thing. I was, I just, you know, I was driving it a little too hard, dude. It started snowing. <laughs> 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 it happens, but I, part of me is like, I should have just got another one right away, but I'm not mad because I, I got paid from insurance for the car and that's how I was able to get my down payment to flip that house. So yeah, exactly. I was just like, you know what? She, I'll just make it back. It'll be okay. Yeah, exactly. And now look, dude, a couple years later, got a 240 and I'm going to get another one. Yeah. Full circle. Nice. What's new for you for, for the next car, Dylan? Um, you got- so I want to sell the Cayenne. I love it, but uh, it's done awesome as like a tow vehicle and it's just a fun car in general, but I want to do more like filming road trips. Like I want to be able to go like camp in Grand Junction or Utah or somewhere for a couple nights. So I want to get a Tundra with a, like a pop-up bed camper. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Um, so get that. As like the tow vehicle, camp vehicle, and then I'll need another daily, so I might do a Subaru. I mean, daily. to be honest, the the Tundra's probably not going to do any worse than the Cayenne for <laughs> gas mileage. Yeah, but it would just be a pain to like be constantly taking the camper on and off, and like or driving it with the camper. It's just not going to be as enjoyable. I, I will for some things, but just as a a daily, I think, uh, especially yeah. in the and I I, I want um, ice racing. I got to get an ice racing car. That was a good time, yeah. Yeah, it's up on Georgetown Lake. Oh, it's the funnest thing. And it's bonkers. It's the best time. I Max speed of like 30 miles per hour. But <laughs> if that. If yeah. that. The speedometer will show like 80. <laughs> but you, you aren't going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I still can't believe JT brings his Porsche up there and rips on it. Man. He brings his 911 up there and just beats the he hell out of it. 911? Good for that guy. Yeah, he got a, a hell of a good time. deal on a... Uh, what is that like an 06? No, no, it's a 996. So it would, I don't know exactly 90s? the year. No, it, it, early 2000s. Okay, yeah. No, it like, might be a 99. He he got a slamming deal on it, which is why he was like, ah, I'll take the car loan. <laughs> like, it's worth it. Hey, man. Sometimes, dude, if it's going to make you happy, dude, it's worth it. Just pay for it. I see him occasionally on there for like 12 100. grand. Yeah, it's a smart car to pick up because they're starting to appreciate yeah, it. I, if I would have had twelve grand the other day when I saw it, I would have. Oh, you should have let <laughs> but, me know. I don't want to swoop that. I, I'd have found a way to convince someone it. I had twelve grand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, my so that's like my short term plan. My medium term plan, I would love uh, to pre runner a nine eleven. Yeah. I think. Jeez. That with the with the <laughs> rear engine, you're not. I would probably try and buy like a salvaged one, a wrecked one, and then because I, I would have to do yeah. like uh, if the bumpers are screwed up anyway. Um, yeah, get one that's pretty thrashed so that you can get it for pretty cheap. And then exactly, yeah. But like, so the Miata is always when you jump it, you you're like tipping forward, and then so I need to add weight to the back, and then you're just adding weight to this car that doesn't have that much power. To begin, to begin with. with, so you have if you have the rear engine, I, it's definitely a, a complicated build that I don't even be, know where I begin to would tackle. Be fully custom, yeah, yeah. Be pretty crazy. I, I mean, I almost feel like, well, you think transferring the weight to the back, you you wouldn't be worried about landing back every every time. You might need like some mid engine, dude. Well, um, I think what happens because it's not like your bike where you can like pump it as well. Like you can by like throttling into it, it yeah. But you've got to have a pretty serious amount of torque. To be able to like legitimately pump the jump in the car, True. and so I don't think you'd be in too much risk of that happening, mm. because your 
back end kind of always gets bucked by the lip of the jump. Very true. Almost when you're in like a downhill bike mm -hmm. and you hit a jump and you're like not eating up the suspension right, it'll just like kick you forward. It kind of does the same thing in a car. Yeah, the, the razors are all rear-engined. Obviously, it's a completely different platform, but I mean, I have no idea. Same concept. I don't think any... There's one guy that's building like a pretty heavy like off-road Baja style one, but I don't think he's to the point of like jumping it and i don't even know if that's his goal yeah as far as like my i want to be like on motocross tracks like yeah. jumping like yeah. like pastrana style like <laughs> yeah. that's cool how'd you get yeah. into that man like what made you go that route i it's rare dude um yeah a lot of probably like different things i mean bmx definitely helped fuel yeah, that as far as like wanting to jump with cars <laughs> definitely if it can be jumped i want to jump it. yeah if and it was just boat, if it's anything because i was in asia for five months where i didn't have a car and then i came back and so when when i was in asia i i just because i've always liked cars i had the i've had a bug eye years ago and i remember um yeah i've always kind of liked cars but uh then for whatever reason, because I wasn't driving in Asia, I started watching car YouTubers and just became obsessed and like found these, my set guys that I would just look forward to every single video and just loved it. And then, so when I came back and the pandemic, the government's giving you all this money, <laughs> like, given huh, one of us all that given, money, right? given <laughs> uh, some of the unemployed idiots, uh, a bunch of money. Like, okay, if I could do anything, like, what what's next? Like, if I could do anything, what would I do? And I was like, why don't I just try, like, becoming a car YouTuber? <laughs> Honestly, it's as simple as that. Oh, it's like, I mean, dude, I think it's working, dude. I, I watch your videos, and I think it's impressive, too, man. Because, I mean, you went from not knowing to have, like, bro, number one, bringing it back a little bit. You towed your Miata with a Porsche, and that was, that was a flex, dude. I was like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> The Porsche costs less than the Miata, actually. I, I, of course, man. Of course. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's still, dude. Got a, I mean, got a deal on that one. It's flex, but. dude. I was like, wow, trailer <laughs> that thing here. Because, <laughs> it, honestly, it's not fun to drive on the street. I can imagine, Dean. Uh, it's it, all over the place. It, yeah. It, it, the tire, like, the tires, it walks. I don't have a muffler on there, so it just screams in your ears. Like, I drove it up to the mountains one time. It was, like, an hour drive. And, like, I get home, and I'm. it's just, like, completely buzzing. It's, like, it takes 100% of your concentration and effort. And so I just get home, and I'm, like, pass out from adrenaline dump. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, like, eh, I, I need to just start trailering it. And I also haven't registered it, so I can do hood wretch it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the hood rush. Yeah. No, I I definitely want like a pre runner would be be real up there in the next car. I've also looked at like getting an old eighties MR two. I love MR twos, bro. Like an OG, no power steering, like all eighty horsepower of it and just rip around in the world's smallest car. It's a death box for sure. Like you get hit by any modern car and the MR2 is going to turn into dust. The best thing about the 80s and 90s though is like, I mean, you only have 80 power, 80 horsepower if that's what you want, you know? But I mean, like you could swap anything because someone's already done it, you know? So there's always yeah. going to be an aftermarket market for it. But like the newer cars, you know, like if you, if you decide to do anything, it's going to cost you everything. So, well, and it's so much harder now. Like, oh, like I've, you could literally swap anything into that MR2 because there's no K20, electronics. Dude. <laughs> like, it's literally <laughs> nothing. It's just... Um, so, I've thought about getting one of those as, like, a fun little daily. Um, like MR2. And then just welding on, like, a custom bike rack and stuff and making it pretty sweet. But, uh, no, ultimately, I want another heavy-duty pre-runner. Like, like, I've looked at that versus a Razor, and, like, the Razor's nice because it's lighter, and you can trailer it a lot easier but you take your pre-runner anywhere though dude. you can take no... it to the grocery store if you want to so <laughs> my first the my, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you ever see my explorer back in the day i had I a 94 have, explorer with like a 12 point cage cycled like 16 inches of travel Man. hydraulic bump stops on all fours like thing was legit and we would rip that thing every single day for two years. It was so fun. I never should have sold it. Yeah, oh, dude, sometimes those things happen. It's yeah. in the past. Though. I've thought about hiring like a PI 
to track it down and buy <laughs> it off it. whoever <laughs> has it now. Uh, like the more and more like secure I'm main, getting in it. my life, the more and more ideal that sounds. Because I bet now like it doesn't run. Like there's no way that the motor still works. So it justifies a motor swap. Mm-hmm. And then just like realistically you just rebuild all the components but everything like the welds and everything should still be more than fine as long as they didn't let it just like rust out and just because i rolled right it. that's the thing what are the chances that it's not in a junkyard that could be 50 yeah. 50 dude if it's in a junkyard even better i'll go find that thing and pay like a thousand bucks for it and just Tell strip it, it for parts on. yeah get all your stuff out of there because that's how i like learned how to weld was that car because i rolled it cut the entire body off straighten the roll cage, cut another Ford Explorer exactly in the same spots, like measured it and everything, and then Frankensteined the other, like new, not rolled Explorer body onto the one that I rolled. And it was perfect. Like every window still sealed, all the doors sealed, the windshield fit. Like it was literally dead on. I couldn't That's believe awesome, it. That's awesome, dude. Fabrication is key. After you could fab, you could do whatever you want, man. You can make your own motor mounts. You can make your own drive shaft. You can... I mean, who do you know that's car. making their own drive shaft? Trey made be... his own, dude. He just got it balanced. No shit. Yeah, dude. It's just a bar. <laughs> well, yeah, but getting it balanced is pretty yeah, well, crucial, yeah, especially in one it, of yeah. Trey's cars that have like 800 horse. You just take it in, dude. They just like your wheels, dude. They toss some magnets on there in some places and then get it balanced and it's good to go. Wow. I mean, I, I want aluminum though because that's know, crazy. <laughs> And really? I, did, I figured it was more of like a machining process and they like lathe it to nope. be straight perfectly. up. Get you a bar, weld the yoke side on there, weld the side that goes to the diff on there, get balanced, rip that thing. No shit. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, dude, I, I, I just got a welder too. Well, my friend got it, but it stays at my house. So I'm working. So it's basically it. mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way so to do it. <laughs> Man, I'm t- he's hooking me up because uh, I have another coupe at my house. I was going to build it, but he bought it off of me. So we're getting ready to RB20 swap that thing, too. So I'll have two of them in there soon. Wow. It's going to be pretty cool. That is a sick, too, dude. It's all wide body and stuff, but he has, like, some frame damage in the front. So we're going to weld some stuff back together. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I should be all right. I've welded, like, once or twice. but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll see. Just I'm ready right for in something there. structural. Yeah. <laughs> That's hey, why. It's either I'm doing it or he's doing it. Yeah, and put enough metal on there and it should hopefully hold. You know, use the angle grinder, smooth it out. It'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my first project was the harness bar in my 3000 GT. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, okay. have a, doesn't have much of a purpose. <laughs> Just hold, hold yeah. you into the car. And, I mean, you roll, dude. It'll stop it from caving in from the sides. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. confident are you that they're like strong welds well it's welded to just it's literally just welded into the side of the sheet metal of the car so uh, so nothing actually like reaches down to like the frame or anything no well because it no there's no frame in the car oh is it just full unibody yeah Mm -hmm. well then that should be pretty reasonably strong i guess yeah i have no idea and i hope we never find out was it was it mig tig uh nope i bought the hundred dollar uh, flux core. Oh, yeah, that's still made. It that's still made. Yeah. Yeah. It works, man. Yeah, it'll get the job done. It might not look great, but it, it does gets not the look job good. Done. No, <laughs> it does not look good at all. It's all good, dude. man. I mean, it's a, it's like a, she'll still pedal. <laughs> right? yeah. Back to that, man. Yeah, dude. I relate everything in my life to BMX. When I'm bad at something at first, I think of that tail whip. I was like, well, the tail whip was hard. This is just gonna be something else that's hard. But now I don't even think when I tail whip, it just goes around. You know? know, we're not talking about this, but tail whips used to mean something. Yeah, dude, it used to mean something. <laughs> when you saw deal. someone do a tail whip, you were like, that guy slaved for three years learning how to do that <laughs> trick. Everyone now learns it in like a week. Why is it so different? Uh, light bikes and people around you know how to do it already. I think it's a huge difference when you're out there like really trying it on your own and you don't have like, I think bike geometry changed a lot too and it makes way more sense now. Way more sense now. So I think about that all the time where I'm like, I literally probably, no exaggeration, spent three years from trying tail whips to where I was like, pretty confident not even like where i am now where i'm like i'm landing this i'm landing this i'm at least getting on the <laughs> yeah. bike yeah. like it was probably three years before i was like like more than 50 50 shot of me landing it and then just 
it's a different I, I think people put a different expectation on themselves now because of the internet. You know, when we were probably trying them, like the internet was just coming out, you know? Yeah. And you knew like two dudes who could do our it. videos. So there was only a few people that could do it. So, you know, you didn't have too many examples, but now like anything, anybody, any video you watch, like they could all tail it. So you could see their techniques. There's how to's on the internet. Yeah. You go to the skate park, majority of people there can do it already. And I think, I think that's huge, dude. It's a big deal because we like you got to think when we grew up we learned a lot of that ourselves just sending it oh for sure no yeah. one knew how to do it you just sent it you know try to figure it out yeah do you feel like that same culture that you're kind of talking about of like the internet makes our own expectations go up of like we should be here we should be there do you oh, feel like absolutely. that's affected you in your car experience where you're like, Oh, I better be like this good at drifting by this fat or like, Oh, my car should look at least this good. Cause I'm comparing it to like oh, I mean, YouTube or any of that. Or do you think it's been more beneficial than anything? Well, it's definitely beneficial. And I, I think that, I think those comparisons, as long as you're not too harsh on yourself, it's honestly healthy. You know, it gives you something to strive for because you know, on your own time, you might take forever to learn something. But when you're like, Oh, these guys are doing it. It, you know, I mean, like a little sense of competitiveness, you're going to be like, oh, no, I'm going to send it too, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it'll help drive you forward and like you can learn, you know, they're just like there's every other kind of video. There's drifting video how to's and best yeah. believe I watch them, dude. I learned a lot. I learned how to flick in, dude. I initiate good with the e-brake and stuff like, but I didn't know any of that stuff. The very first time I tried, I didn't. I didn't know anything, you know. I just ripped it, dude, and I stalled out right away. I didn't know that you got to push the clutch in and hold it in, and then rev match and get it back up and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I think I think the internet it changed everything. That's how that's how there's that's how everybody can knows manual and stuff now. It's because that's the expectation. It's like you have to know how to do this, so you spend a bunch of time doing that. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I still can't nose manual. Yeah, exactly. Me either, dude. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was like Flatland. I saw it and I was like, that's real cool. That's real impressive. Looks way too hard to learn. I'm out. It's it's another, dude, it's a whole other thing. Yeah. You know, it's like learning how to ride a bike again. I wanted to get good at it. I built one of those like nose manual trainers that were hot for a minute. Oh, on and you the could internet. like just yeah. balance in it. And you like, like put four pegs on and you just like practice. And uh, I, I was like pretty diligent for like a week before I, I was just over it. I was like, I've been practicing for like an hour a day. <laughs> On this stupid well, trainer and i've gone from like no nose manual to like now i can hold it for one second it's like a one mississippi and then i follow it's like no what's the trainer do you just stop you from flipping forward so you just basically make like a little bike stand essentially that the pegs just sit in this little cradle mm -hmm. and then you can just hop up into the nose manual and because you're on the stand not on the wheel yeah. you don't have to worry about your rolling oh god so you, you can just focus on like the balance. feeling that balance point hmm. kind of like when you would like first learn foot jams and you just like jam it in the tire and just practice balancing on flat ground it's like the same thing oh, i guess tight. yeah some flatlander did it because that's what made it seem super fun I was like, oh, I could actually learn flatland, <laughs> like a sick like rolling whiplash or like a hang. But look at where'd you get that from? The internet, dude. exactly. Yeah. The internet, man. But that was also the downfall where I was like, this six year old is crushing it on the internet, so I'm out. <laughs> like he's six though. There, he has no thoughts in his head yet. You know, yeah. he, he like he's a blank slate. Like that's I'm telling you, especially when you're young, dude. Like I see these young dudes and they rip, but I understand why they rip. They're blank slates. They have no trauma, no injuries, you know, like just blank slate. Oh, you just throw these twice? Yeah. You know, they don't get a flashback every time they three the spine. Like, oh no. <laughs> I don't think I've met a BMX rider in their 20s who doesn't have a horrific spine problem. Oh, man. Threeing a spine, like specifically threes. Oh, dude, because you loop out or you land so flat you explode. That's, that's the one that got me. Or you do it smooth. Yeah. I mean, there's three options and I've had all three. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Well, uh, you mentioned earlier that you've got like a team essentially for your drifting and like your car, oh, car yeah, club. What, tell us more about that. Uh, so it's Team Fuzakiru. It means uh, reckless in Japanese. Um, but yeah, my boy Dean, it was like really his idea. And then like he kind of like talked to me about it. I was like, dude, this is sick. Why don't we do this? So now like we just started and we're pushing for it. But it's it, 
we really started it because I learned in this, it takes a team to build a car, man, to like really do it right. Because the things you don't know, like your friends will know, the parts you don't have, your friends will have. And then it's just a way to hang out with your boys, you know, as you get older, like people started falling off from BMX and things like that. But like cars just like brought us all back together, just like it was, you know, mm -hmm. right when we started. So yeah, we're just going to do it, man. And our, honestly, all we want to do is just slide cars and throw sick events. That's all we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to just slide cars and throw sick events. They're only going to get bigger and better. Like I said, that, that barbecue, that, that car meet that we had, that was our second one. But now we know what to do for the next one. Just the hardest thing was, you know, like to get it out there without like posting it on your page directly because I mean like Facebook cops are real, Instagram cops are real and like we wanted to keep it low key but as fun as possible. So we're just gonna learn and we're gonna grow and we're gonna film a bunch of videos and a bunch of clips and a bunch of edits and we're gonna travel with each other, enter events. So I mean, this next chapter in my life, you know, late twenties heading into these thirties, it's definitely gonna be heavy on the car side, so it's awesome. And my boys got cool cars, too. My other friend, we all got, well, us three in the team, we all got 240s. Uh, Aggie has a S14, and Adine has a 13. Adine has a SR, and Aggie has a 1J, and I got an RB. So it's, like, kind of cool. We all have, like, similar platforms just with three different motor swaps, you know. So I don't know. It's going to be really cool. But like I said, it's still in its, like, infant stages, so. We got a lot of work to do, but I'm, I'm excited to see where things go with this. As long as we, like, stay dedicated to it, I'm sure it'll be something something pretty cool. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah so like it's it. basically, like, starting, like, a BMX team. Yeah. It's, like, dude. what it feels – because, like, we used to have, like, <laughs> gimmick BMX too. back in the day. That yeah. was, like, the crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, yeah, that's, that's so sick. And it's similar vibes, you know? Like, we hang out. We drive cars, dude. Drink beer. Eat food. Yeah. I don't know. It's just cool, man. And yeah, the food at the event was legit, by the way. Like, yeah, it was a well done out. event. Like we're I we're talking about how wild it was, but like 3, that that dude was literally. We were there for four or five hours, and the dude literally didn't stop cooking that entire time, other than when whoever it was was on the BMX track. I heard <laughs> the cook stop for that, but like just like throwing down burgers. Oh yeah. Yeah, his name Tacos. is Ben. He, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, his Instagram is Entree3000, so yeah. definitely shout out to him. That dude is awesome. Yeah, he's he did awesome. an amazing job. Like Dylan said, there was like four different choices. Like, it was a real deal. Like, he had the carnitas and some pork dude, and burgers and brats. Like, it was sick. We sat down. I went and met up with him because he worked at a restaurant. I went up to his restaurant, and we came up with a menu together, dude. I was like, look, dude, I need this many people to be fed. And it's crazy, you know, we only bought enough to feed 80 people, and at the end of it, we were out of food, so it worked out. It was there cool. were definitely more than 80 people there throughout yeah. the day. I, I, don't, I don't know how we did it, dude, honestly, because, like, he told me, you know, he was like, well, you can get these pork butts and all this stuff. Yeah. He's talking to me like a chef. I was like, dude, I don't know. Just <laughs> show up with some food, man. I just need grub. <laughs> but, yeah, dude, I mean, that dude was awesome. And shout out to the DJ that was there, too, DJ SD. He, he that was yeah that was he was crushing it too. he was literally like for something that was essentially a second go or like the first real attempt i feel like there was not one thing that really yeah, could have been improved it was at all legit from the start appreciate that i was like we worked hard on it it was a team thing so pumped on that pumped everybody went out and had fun i'm pumped on you man you like it was like everybody was chilling, and I told the dean, I was like, dude, we got to set this thing off. Let's go slide right now. And he was like, right now? I was like, right now, dude. So we went and slid, and then after we slid, you went and did your thing, dude. And then just after that, it was, just, it was <laughs> yeah, that exact yeah. chaos I was looking for. I was like, yeah, this is the vibe. Tire smoke everywhere. It was funny. My mom came for a second. She was talking to me. She was like, what are you doing? And I just started ripping a fat burnout next to her, dude. Just slid off. It was awesome. Oh, man. What a good time. What a good time. I keep reliving yeah. it. I go through my photos and watch the video all the time, man. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for the next one. Absolutely. March for sure. I just wish I had, like, my own space or I could rent out a space, you know? That's one thing, like, that is going to – is part of my goal is to figure out some way – like, it's ridiculous that there's nowhere to drive – cars really IMI is not 
And it's far. It's out the way. Right. And a hundred bucks. It's expensive. You shred through your tires because it's really rough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous that the like that you technically have to break the law to get into any sort of driving stuff. It's not. Yeah, or be willing to spend like you know five grand a season on just like random right, which is like not and accessible. Associations and you know driving all the way down to like Pueblo or something for a day. There's a pretty good chance. And it really doesn't take much. You just need a, a plot of land and some concrete poured. You could set up cones. You could do all type of stuff. You know, you could eat. And I mean, it, depending on how big the land is, you can have a dirt track and you can have a car like a like concrete sl- skid pad for cars, dude. And everybody will be happy with a cone set up and they'll be happy that it's on concrete. So your tires last. Because mm-hmm. like you said, I am I. That stuff is rough, man. And going I know a dude who went through is, a full ooh. set of tires after one set of laps. On his RS. He had a Focus RS. Oh, man. Um, they were super yeah, expensive, the, super grippy. He had a great time. Like, his actual lap times were great. But he literally got a single out. And then as soon as they, like, called that. And that's route, not even drifting. That was racing. That was just real racing, yeah. Drifting, they go through a set of tires every session. Oh, well, I yeah. I. Which, that makes sense. But, like, yeah. To, it's rough enough to rip up <laughs> tires if you're not drifting. Literally brand new that day, and they were gone after 10 laps. No, no slight towards them, though, because shout out for being someone that does it. Because, I mean, in oh, the yeah, yeah. area, I can't even imagine anyone else. I just mean there needs to be more options. Like, it's not it's like acceptable. Parks, you know, yeah. 90 parks. We can't have five drift tracks, you know, four, yeah. three. It, it would be, I feel like they've got enough space where I bet if there was enough of, like, a coalition of drivers to mm-hmm. get together and, like, help out it's just too far away way. dude location is everything. i kind of feel like it has to be though like in all honesty if you could go out there and there was like a legit concrete track it'd be worth it oh yeah well i mean going all the way to imi is a trek but i don't think you know the elizabeth area there's plenty of land out there well but that's, that's just a right trek outside for anybody of, in Denver. yeah that's true you just about partial else? that way because yeah. you're already outside of Denver. <laughs> hey, it's still a drive for me, dude. I'm in Aurora, man. Elizabeth is almost yeah. an hour for me still. But I'd be willing to go that way before Two I went to me. IMI. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so This is kind of a trick to get out here. I couldn't believe. I can't believe how often I see you at the park when you live this far. Dude, dude. that's what I'm saying. I get so <laughs> butthurt that no one will ever come out to visit me except for the one or two times Dylan's come out to ride the dirt jumps near here. Literally, like, no one will drive out to, to see us unless it's uh, – JT and Kim will come out. But, like, yeah, I'm, no one will come, like, out to ride or, any, like, any of the parks out here, really, except for every now and again. And then everyone's like, yeah, let's ride Wheel Park in Aurora at 5. And I'm like, cool, guys. Cool. Super cool. <laughs> Can't wait to – Wheel Park is the best, man. It's just the transitions are perfect. The locals understand, dude. Everybody watches out for each other. The vibe at Wheel Park is the best. It's lawless, dude. But I'm not sure. Set up an airbag, best. dude, if you want. Where else can you do that without any any trouble? You absolutely cannot do that in Parker, as it turns out. No. As it turns out. Which I, uh, <laughs> such a bummer that uh, that park has just kind of gotten ruined by the people who ride it. <laughs> like, <laughs> not Well, not the riders, but all the like scooter kids and like shitty parents around there like it's it's a bummer because it's probably like the best park that i know and it's just it's, it's literally close <laughs> uh, that's just because that's your local son yeah I yeah i really want to try that new frederick park that uh oh yeah no no i know I exactly Troy what you're talking about through a clip up and it seems like there's a real good spot to throw up the resi quarter mm-hmm. looks real primo Mm-hmm. I did that resi quarter. I, I wish we'd yeah. ride that more. Everyone's pumped on the airbag. I was like, let's throw that thing on the quarter. I'm just scared of that airbag. I'm not even going to lie. I got sacrificed, <laughs> man. I have a hard time when it's like there's no jump or anything. You just pedal all the way to it. I have a hard time gauging how fast to go. The first time, I overcleared it by like five feet, man. I landed at the very bottom. The second time, I overcleared it by like three feet and landed nose heavy. And then Jesus, he went and backflipped, and we were talking all this stuff the day before. I was like, oh, backflip it too. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I was like, hmm, I'm not ready for a backflip yet, but maybe I should just try something. So I tried to do like a dump three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. I did it, man. I was like, oh, yeah, that was great. And then I came around and I'm looking. I only have like two inches that I'm about to land on. 
I slip off the resi and I'm falling backwards. But you know, like when you're falling or just when you're riding in general, like time is slow for you almost. So I'm looking, I'm like, oh, yep, I'm about to fall on these mats. Yeah. I went right past yeah. the mats, dude. <laughs> on my back, got lawn chaired. I was like, oh, it's done. It's done. We're done right now. Oh, man. That was the hardest fall I've had since I can't even remember. That was a rough one. Yeah, watching Dylan get sent on those backflips was pretty rough, too. Yeah, that there was like five in a row. <laughs> but I feel like that's like something that BMX definitely taught me is the just like one more. Like end, end on a win. Like whatever it is, even if I just crash like a hundred flares like I did that day. Oh. I finally landed one and then I was like, cool, I'm ending on a win. I'm going to do one run of tricks I know how to land and I can do well just to like end on a high note. Oh, and then that one run gets you. You're right. <laughs> last I try, one. I tried call, to have that never call no, last run. I tried to have that spirit. I told you I messed up the first two times, and I was like, okay, one more, man. <laughs> <laughs> one more did get me, dude. And I was a lawn chair, and I was like, no, nah, we're done. Oh, man. We're done today. Well, and it is a weird setup when you're just like hauling ass at a stationary object with no frame of reference. Like you didn't How get to drop in and like nothing, pump, dude. Yeah. Nothing. Being a show rider, like I'm pretty used to it. just like, well, I guess we're going to have to see what happens. <laughs> just Man. pedal at something. I mean, I'm super pumped that we have a resi, but I'm just not. I like, there is no, like, there's nothing I can reference the steepness of that lip to. If that makes sense, like yeah, it's the only thing that feels like that. Yeah, for I'm sure. like, there is not a box. Uh, we have a box jump at our skate park. I'll say that one's a little mellow, but like, regardless, I've been to plenty of parks and I've rode plenty of boxes, and I have not rode one that's that steep, dude. So like, that kind of threw me off too. I was like, dang, you put some coping on here. This is almost a quarter, man. I know, it's great. But, yeah, I I want to really, really, really badly flip one of the dirt jumps over here by my house. And every time I'm at those jumps, I'm like, is today going to be the day? (laughs) And every time I look at the lip, I'm like, it's just so, I know for a fact it would come around. But every time I'm like, it is more mellow. And then I just, I I wimp out every time. I need another like solid session to go down out there, at least before the end of the year. I I want to try so bad. I miss Evolve bad, man. That was my spot. I, I loved that place so much, dude. You could just go to the foam pit, slide over to the resi, go over to, like, that knuckle landing box jump, dude. Yeah. Before they, like, put that weird spine set up in there and stuff, dude, that place was that place was mint. Especially after they had those two little minis hit the quarter, dude. And and even when they had the Spocks back there, dude, that's that when Spox? it was the best. That Spocks, man. That was a good Oof. time, yeah. You can learn so much. I used to be able to, every time, super whip, coping to coping on that Spox. Not land flat at all. And, yeah. like, I was threeing spines again because of that. And it was, like, a legit spine, too, dude. That spine yeah. was no joke. And it had, like, a sick vert wall run up. And you could just gap in and out. Like, yeah. I miss that place bad, dude. That That's that's when it hit an all-time high for me, I think, dude. I was, like, I had to evolve. And I was, like, this is my Woodward. You know, I can learn anything <laughs> here. I can learn anything here. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like you have always like naturally excelled at technical riding. Yes. And more and more like I'm – and like you're like, oh, I'm going to go like send the airbag and like that's where your like that's comfort pretty- zone ends versus I'm like, yeah, I'll throw some flip whips over the, rip, the airbag. But then someone's like, why don't you double tie ride that foot high rail? And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's so scary. <laughs> yeah. And I've been trying to do a lot of like real techie stuff every time I go places now just to – Dude, it gives you longevity, man. You just well, run down the quarter if you mess up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight well, it just, up. It just uh, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier of like just being able to constantly challenge yourself, mm-hmm. whether it's with cars like what you're doing now, or whether it's on a bike or anything else. Like just being able to challenge yourself that one to find the edges of the map, so to speak, and and be able to push the boundaries. And kind of scare yourself a little. And it feels good. I mean, even if you don't get scared, you know, just when you accomplish something, dude, and you just feel like you're like U2.0 for that second, you know, yeah. like that just feels so good to walk around with is like, yeah, I was that guy, but now I'm this guy. You yeah. Know? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> that's awesome. I I'm upgraded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm this guy now. Like I, I, I look for that in everything, you know, like I'm telling you, as I go through everything in life, I think of it as BMX. Like if I hate it, I'm like. 
Oh, I remember you hated those foot jams too, but now it's like your favorite thing, you know. I'm like, oh, you hated this, but yeah. how many times you said, I hate tail whips, fuck this noise, <laughs> and then now it's like my go to, like, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable on this job, I better <laughs> tail whip it and find out if it feels good, you know. It's, man, all of it, dude. I mean, just like BMX, uh, it, it taught me so much. I don't think there's been a better teacher in my life than BMX. Yeah, I'll second that. It's serious. Yeah, dude. I think it's that's a good point. Especially after you get smoked, you know, like it's like one thing when it's just fun, you know, like when you're just having fun, it's one thing. But like after you get smoked and you're like, you're seriously got to come back, you know, from like an injury. Like my 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 first head injury, you know, I wasn't doing anything, dude. I jumped I jumped a gap that's not even a bike length wide, dude, and my tire just washed out, and I just woke up. I was like, whoa. But you know, after I came back from that, two weeks later, dude, I boosted an air out bar spin man and i missed my hand like four <laughs> times i was like whoa 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 just dragged my face again and then i came back and i was like okay if i can come back from these things why do i let other things hold me back you know bmx dude yeah BMX. absolutely not every day you drag your face off you know <laughs> yeah no it, it's it's a very unique experience that i definitely take for granted just how resilient like mentally I've become because of BMX where it's like, oh yeah, like that sucked, but I'm going to do it again. Like right. what? I'm just going to stop or like, oh, I'm going to give up like so many times. It gives you a toughness, life. man, like mentally and physically. Cause I mean, yeah, people, you know, people get hurt and I'm just like that, that took you out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I mean, see <laughs> some like grown ass people in their like mid twenties where it's like the first time they've ever gotten hurt. And it just wrecks their life. Like everything about their life comes to a, a grinding halt. And I'm like, dude, I just found out uh, literally on Friday. I've been walking around with a broken collarbone for three years. It's still broken. It never healed. It's still two fully separate bones. <laughs> the x-ray was like, the x-ray tech out loud was like, oh my God. When they took the photo, I was like, that's never good. Like, <laughs> uh -oh. And the doctor came and he was like, this is ridiculous. How have you gone three years? I'm like, does it actually hurt? Like, Toughness, man. Maybe once in a while. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely something missing from, like, some of today's youth, perhaps. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, my friend, dude, he got, like, a shinner this big. And you should see the size of the bandage he had for it. You would have thought his leg was going to come off or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's like, dude, it's serious. You think I need stitches? I'm like, dude, no. No, nah, you need super glue, cuz. <laughs> Not even glue, man. Just let that thing close up. You'll be fine. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, dude. I just I just owe it everything, and I always respect it, and I always keep it in my mind. That's why I have so many BMX tattoos and stuff, just because it reminds me, man. I'm just like, dude, this is who you are, bro. Remember it. Yeah. Even in driving, dude, I'm going to put something from my, from my, one of my, well, not my bike, because I still love riding that thing, but I will get a bike part to put yeah. on my car, like permanent fixture or something like that, because it'll just keep me confident, dude. I was like, remember that tail whip, dude? Remember that truck <laughs> over the death rail in Golden? That truck over the rail? <laughs> Whoa, that was, yeah. Yeah, that was a highlight in my career right there, though. Heck so. yeah. Well, um, we're pretty much at like an hour and a half, so pretty good yeah. spot to, to chat is there anything else that you wanted to share that like anything brought up or no nah, man i think we covered everything this is actually pretty cool i was i was like i don't know what it's gonna be like when i got <laughs> here you know it's like but i mean this has been awesome thanks for having me yeah, yeah thanks for coming it. on man it's crazy that it's been this long to get you on here but it literally ran into that one day riding the airbag and i was like what are we doing why is Tremaine not been on the podcast so Super, super glad you could join us. Well, yeah. Thanks again for having me, and thanks for the, you know, when I taste the Kila vibes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we always end on the same question. This is just like a completely selfish question for you. Like, this Send doesn't it. have to be a good story or anything like that. It's just for you. Uh, when you think of joy, what comes to mind? Like, is it a, whether it's a person? I think you story. just answered that, honestly. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's usually what ends up happening is we talk about exactly that thing for an joy, hour and a half. Pure joy. But just like when you think of joy, what pops into your, your mind? Like I said earlier, dude, like when you do something and, it, you know, at first it seems like it's out of your league, regardless what it is. It could be, you know, a promotion. I've, I've had this feeling a couple of times, you know, so 
regardless of what it is. But when I get when I look back and I'm like, I was that guy, but now I'm this guy. I straight up get a sense of joy, you know. Yeah, definitely. I love that feeling of like just like, I mean, progressing me, dude. This is the nicest thing you get. Take care of it. <laughs> yes. Make it better. I love Dang, it. Dang, I love that. That's a great answer. Heck yeah. Well, sweet. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on. No worries. No worries. Thanks for having me.